Division I marketing um, to the Theatrical Design State Contest. Obviously, we would have preferred to be gathering in person and giving you that one-to-one -one experience with our expert critic judges, but it was not to be. You will be receiving your individual critiques written in your ballots. And I think some people were a little bit confused about that. Your critiques will be in your ballots. This session today is just an opportunity for you to get to meet your judge and hear a little bit about his overall observations, kind of where he was coming from, um, just and also some inspiration and guidance for where we're headed next and towards the future. So um, you're very fortunate today to have been adjudicated by Mr. Nick Ewan. Uh, sorry, I just got a phone call. <laughs> Nick Ewan. Dr. Ewan is a professor and technical director in the theater department at Howard Payne University. He's taught courses such as theater history, designing and executing the technical aspects of every production. Dr. Ewan has also written and directed many children's plays for the Lyric Theater in Brownwood, Texas, and is the Minister of Music at May First Baptist Church. Very well-rounded. His expertise in marketing and digital media has served our contest so well previously, and we are fortunate to have him return. It is one thing to be amazing at what you do, and another entirely to be able to find, encourage, and inspire others with that ability. And so um, with that being said, we have Mr. Nick Ewan, who is a champion of both. Well, thank you so much, uh, Rachel. And uh, I just first want to start with saying what an honor it is for me to get to serve uh, once again. So this is my third time uh, mm -hmm. serving as marketing judge uh, for State UIL. And I got into this. Um, Rachel, I'm pretty sure it was Josh Helms that mm -hmm. introduced us. Um, Josh Helms uh, at Fossil Ridge High School. Uh, introduced us and uh, probably the reason why uh, Josh Helms got me uh, sent over this way is because he knows about me that I'll share with you uh, one of the reasons why uh, I'm, I love doing this marketing area. First of all, uh, I'm also a graphic designer. So like Rachel said, real well-rounded and that this isn't in my bio for my UIL judge. I'm also a UIL one act play judge. So uh, some of you may have seen me around as a one-act play judge, and I love doing that as well. Uh, but um, I paid for all of my graduate school, so my master's degree and my doctorate, by being a graphic designer, uh, working for just about every form of print media that you can work for, from magazines, newspapers, uh, t-shirt design, vehicle graphics, uh, brochures, pamphlets, um, during my time at Texas Tech, that's where I did my doctorate. And that was really my first step into marketing for a theater department. And uh, anyway, so I did uh, training in, in Adobe uh, master certifications in Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, most of the Adobe Creative Suite stuff. And I try to stay up to date with all of the uh, different design programs as well, including those that are free. I'm not sure what programs y'all are out there using. If you have any questions about that sort of thing, I'd love to answer any of that stuff too. Here at Howard Payne, I've also taught uh, the, the capstone graphic design courses, which is the portfolio class. So uh, graphic design where they've got to design logos, they've got to design uh, magazine covers, book covers, they've got to design t-shirts, they've got to design event posters, they've got to sign album covers, just a whole assortment of things. Uh, uh, so I do, I do that course as well, in addition to the theater courses. So that's some of my back and that sort of thing. So I love getting to look at um, what some of, your, some of your students are doing and so I'll just kind of jump into that. Um, I've, uh, over this last week, this has been finals week here at Howard Payne. So I've been uh, in between grading and everything, getting to look at the wonderful submissions uh, that y'all have sent my way. Um, and like I said, this is my third year uh, uh, being the marketing judge. And I think this year's prompt was just the best. I'm so excited about it. In fact, so excited and so inspired that I'm going to be directing, uh, not Men of La Mancha, but I'm going to be directing Don Quixote in the spring of 2022. I know, uh, just <laughs> it just got in my head and I've got to do it. So uh, that's some of the inspiration that I've got from, from your students' work. 
Um, and it's been great to look at, look at that, all of it. So, um, general observations so far, it's, um, I love that the students needed to pick one of the artworks representing Don Quixote, uh, as their, in, as their, as their foundational idea, just the graphic image of that. And then uh, the different approaches that they took on realizing that and, and using that as their inspiration to create all of their marketing materials is really interesting to see how it's applied in different ways. Um, I think there's only, I think there's only two, I think there's only two submissions where a student picked the same artwork. And, mm -hmm. and that just means there was a very wide selection they of were. artworks for them to choose from. And even those two, uh, as you all know, as creative people, that their their approaches are, are so different, even though they chose the same artwork. They chose to be inspired by different aspects of that same piece of art. So I love getting to do this in person. So gosh, I guess it was 2018. Um, yeah, 2018, I was... Uh, marketing judge and that was the last time I got to meet in Austin uh, and be in person and, and this works so well when I can meet your students. Um, I'm not sure if any of them are on here if it's all teachers. No, actually the students are here too. The students are. The students Great. and their teachers are here. Mm -hmm. Well I so much wish that I could meet you in person students and teachers uh, so I could so I could get to know you because uh, personality is so much a part of any creative endeavor, uh, whether it's you know acting or or scene design, costume design, and it's and in marketing as well, getting to know who you are and just getting to like, I, I usually ask some questions like, okay, tell me about this, like where did you find this? Did you did you draw this yourself? And usually tell if somebody's marketing has some of their own hand drawn or hand illustrated, they made this artwork themselves with their hand. They made it themselves using Illustrator or using Photoshop or using some uh, you know, computer digital uh, design platform. They use something to make it themselves. Or did you find it? Did you put it together out of other things? Um, how did the pieces come together for you? I like to hear back about that. So maybe if we have some time, um, you, know, you can share with me. Uh, and like I said, I'd love to answer questions. Um, some things that I look for as a judge, uh, and uh, I would say right off the bat, um, I look for uh, just how it hits me. Um, I don't necessarily look at your, uh, at your and, and all of them are very well written, your justification paper. You after looking at the image. So I just like to get like, it, like if I was walking along the sidewalk and I saw this image hanging up on a bulletin board somewhere, I'm in a laundromat and I see it on the, I see it pinned up on the wall or it's taped to a doorway of a restaurant. I want to see it. And, and what is my reaction in the first like five seconds, <laughs> which is an eternity in marketing time. Uh, those of you that have worked in marketing or graphic design, you know, you get fractions of seconds to to capture your audience. And I'm already a captive audience as your judge, but I try to look at it as if I'm just seeing this out and about in my life. Is this something that I'm interested in? Did it capture my imagination? Is it telling me a story? Um, is it confusing? Is it clear? Uh, can I easily access on the image all the information that I need to know? Uh, so things that kind of will be drawbacks will be like, uh, if the time or the date or the location, right? Simple stuff that can sometimes be overlooked. Oh my gosh, I forgot to put where this play is being performed. You know, stuff like that matters because those are, that's where you lose them. If you can get somebody's attention, that's where you lose them. Um, and it's, and it's unfortunate that those, I don't know, maybe tedious details can be what holds us up sometimes, but they're so important as a graphic designer, as a marketing professional, that's what you actually need to get. 
that's what your that's your goal. You know what I mean? Um, the the visual that captures the attention uh, that's just the trick. Right? That's the that's the uh, that's the flash. But then the real meat of it is all that tedious information stuff. Is it all there? Is it presented in a way that I can get at it um, and everything about this performance that I need to know if I'm an interested audience member. That's what I'm looking for. Um, if that is confusing, it, it, please feel free to ask me, can you go over one more time what your approach is? You look at it and what are you looking for? Uh, please feel free to ask me when we get to that. Uh, then from there, uh, if all of that, if it's captured my attention, I'm interested and I can see all the information, then I move on to um, what are the, what are the, I'm a fontophile, uh, so I'm, I'm someone who's obsessed with fonts. Um, and I will tell you, uh, students and teachers, I almost always start textually. I start with the, with the textual logo. Um, and so as a graphic designer, that has worked better for me. And I'll explain why in just a second. Uh, but I'm looking for fonts, font selection, font choice. Does the font speak the same message? Um, and does the font, um, is it readable? Is it clear in, when it needs to be clear and, and all of that stuff? So fonts need to both be you know, beautiful image wise and also functional. Can I actually read it? Uh, so textually, does the text look good? Does the title look good? All of that. Uh, and then I'm looking at the actual graphics, right? What uh, photography is used? What illustration or drawings? Um, if there's clip art, is it, is it a good use of clip art or is it a bad use of clip art? For me, as a professional graphic designer, what I found in my career is that most clip art falls into the this is a bad use of clip art, but there is occasionally good use of clip art. Uh, looking for that kind of stuff. Um, is this, um, uh, especially with the way that the prompt is made this year, is the, is the image of the original artwork or is it derivative of the original artwork? And I know that distinction might be purely subjective, uh, but evocative to me would say, I see it there, I see the influence of it, uh, but it's its own thing. It's its own new, beautiful kind of uh, reimagining of the same uh, colors, the same tempo and rhythm visually of the piece. Um, it's telling the same story, but it's doing it in a new and creative way. Derivative, I would say, would be kind of the negative end of that, where I'm looking and I'm saying, this person's just tried to copy something else. Uh, in, in uh, trying to say this in delicate terms because I don't want to hurt anybody. I know students are out there. Did I, did I, am I derivative? Um, I'm not saying to worry too much about that. That's kind of a, that's kind of a fine line uh, in subjective. I'm not or hopelessly derivative and they're just right out. I, I didn't see any of that. So, but that's something that I'm looking for and something that all graphic design and marketing you have to be concerned with. Uh, an example for outside of this contest uh, for you of uh, inspiration that wound up derivative. Uh, a, a local theater group <laughs> that I work a lot with and I, and I don't want to badmouth them. So anyway, one of our local theater groups was performing uh, the stage version of A Few Good Men. Uh, and most of your teachers, okay, students, you probably maybe don't know what I'm talking about, but probably most of your teachers, a few good men, we're thinking of um, the film with Tom Cruise and uh, Jack Nicholson and Demi Moore. It's a very famous film, and if you're in your mind, you can probably even picture the cover art, the poster art of it. Um, there's kind of a, like a... An in shadow of Tom Cruise, Demi Moore, and Jack Nicholson. That's the movie poster, and everybody recognizes it. The font is a solid serif, all capital font, a few good men. It looks super American. It looks serious. It looks, uh, uh, it looks like, 
I don't know, military, serious, and uh, also a little bit serene, I guess, uh, or some of the words I would use to describe it. Well, the, the group that was performing that, their marketing material, they made that exact poster. So it was just that poster. They didn't change anything except for the faces of the actors. They put the faces of our local actors who were performing those roles. And then they put that image on a billboard <laughs> here in town uh, and posters all over town. And to me, it looks derivative. Uh, even though I know these people, I love them. The performance was amazing. The play was so good. Uh, the marketing material, I feel that distinction is something that I look for. Is it evocative? As in it evokes this image? this visual style or is it derivative? And that's a hard thing with this particular prompt to go with. Um, and then um, I'm looking for across all the materials, does the, do the design choices agree across, you know, from the poster to the program, uh, to uh, it, the calendar, everything that they do, are they, are they going with the same design influences, same font selection? Uh, same tempo and rhythm where it's appropriate, because sometimes, you know, that's not appropriate. Um, and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And then from their justif justification paper, uh, which I think all of them are so well written, so thoughtful. Um, and yeah, I think I'm hearing back from somebody. Was that me? Some of the stuff that I'm looking for. Um, so you can come back to oh with uh, one of the reasons why I I typically begin any design for marketing especially with theater with the uh, with a textual logo um, the the title the font choice and all of that how does how does the title look is because number one that is the most important thing on that document on that image is the title of the play. Next to that, all of the information is, it comes after that. Um, second reason that I start with the title is that if you're going to translate your design into any other form from a t-shirt, right? I'm wearing a Cinco de Mayo t-shirt, by the way. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody's here. Uh, Cinco de Mayo is happening right now. I know it's not the Cinco of de Mayo. So I've got the t-shirt on right now. And this logo was designed and it's a textual logo for the most part, then they can put it on anything from a t-shirt to a banner. They can put it on a business card size. Does it lose quality at different sizes? Um, and also would it, would it be impossible to print on uh, and be legible on various sizes? Here's what I mean by that is I recommend making a textual logo that fits in a rectangular shape. Yes, a rectangular shape. If your textual logo and horizontally, right? If your textual logo fits like this, it doesn't. It doesn't translate to print media across all all platforms, uh, from a brochure to uh, just on a printed page, something like that. You want to be able to print it at a legible size on almost any any anything, right? From your poster to your t-shirt to uh, the ticket stub even, right? Will it translate to the size of a ticket stub? If your text, if your logo is like spread out kind of all over the place or in a big round shape, uh, it doesn't always translate very well as you shrink it down onto a small surface or when you blow it up to a big surface, you run into problems with proportion. So my recommendation is a textual logo that fits in a rectangular shape. And that way you have the, the easiest access to putting it onto any other print media or web media uh, that you could come across. That just tends to work best. And you can ask me questions about that. If that doesn't make sense to you, I will be happy to come back to that. Um, yeah, what else? Um, other than that, um, I would say um, I'm so I'm so impressed with the creativity that these students have, and they're so diverse. Um, I've noticed this every time that I've judged theater marketing. 
that everybody's working on the same play, but based on the marketing, if you were if you were walking down a street and all these posters were lined up and you weren't reading them, you're just walking past, just glancing at them, you would not even maybe realize that this is all the same play. <laughs> because they they tell, they each tell different stories. Um, and that's that's what I love reading in your justification papers is this is the this is what the story means to me. Um, and there's such there's such depth of understanding and thought of what the play Men of La Mancha, what the what is the meaning of it? And what are the many layers of meanings under the meaning, right? Um, and people really had fun. I could tell that you had fun exploring that, finding ways to tell that story in a graphic on a poster. Uh, that's one thing I always try to do that I always encourage This in that image that's on a poster, it's on a two-dimensional surface, can you tell a story uh, in a moment? So they look at it and even if they don't know how it ends, or especially if they don't know how it ends, don't give anything away, right? If they don't know who the main characters are, um, if you just look at it and you get a sense of a story, I'm sure all of you probably at this point in your lives have experienced walking into a situation and you know right off the bat, something's going on here. <laughs> you walk into a room and two people are staring at each other, right? And you're like, whoa, what's the story here? And that's how looking at a poster, I, I think looking at a poster should feel that way. You look at it and you can sense drama. Right? And that's one of the things that's so fun about working on theater marketing as opposed to so many other things. I mean, I've spent a lot of hours working on marketing for selling cars, and uh, it's not nearly as much fun as. Uh, well, it's, uh, you know, it's got 100,000 miles and it's this much money. That's the story you're trying to. Tell. OK, what can I do with that? But with a play, you know, and especially a play like Man of La Mancha, you really did an excellent job, all of these, you did an excellent job of finding all of those meanings, the depths of characters. Um, I think you all did a great job of selecting um, and then realizing, or at least attempting to realize that image uh, and evoking that image on the page. Uh, and I've just enjoyed all of it so far. Uh, I'm, I'm almost half an hour in here. And so I really don't wanna go on too long. I tend to do that. Uh, once I get carried away. So please, I'd like to uh, ask, ask me some questions. <laughs> Let me know what you think uh, and, and any questions that you have for me. Um, I, I'll start off just so people get used to figuring out how to unmute and everything like that. I'll, I'll get you guys started off so you'll be ready to, to push your unmutes in just a second. Is, um, I, you know, just a little bit about um, you kind of talked about your process and like finding the, the different things, but as far as um, we, we looked at what specifically these guys can work on and improve overall. Like if you kind of see yeah. across the board, this is an area that we're really strong in. This is something like maybe okay. we're doing really well in posters, but our program needs some up or maybe some reaction to the, some of the other pieces like the study guides, because that's something that right. um, you know some people might find it weird that we have that in marketing, but because so many programs end up having to market educationally to uh, schools and place people to bring in yeah. to productions, it, it falls on marketing. So we're just kind of like uh, reacting to maybe some of those other parts of our whole and some of the challenges or things in those that you saw. Um, okay, so I would say with some of the challenges that you guys face, in a practical way when I'm in person because I can see and touch your actual materials. I really appreciated some of y'all took a photograph of your inspiration board uh, so I could actually see like the stuff pasted onto a board and stuff. I love seeing that in person and I love seeing your posters in person because it's totally different uh, when it's printed. Uh, and I'm sure you have already come across this, but having worked in print media for so long, um, some bits of advice that I almost always try to share. Number one, talk to your printer. Uh, always go and meet them. Whoever is running the copy center, 
Um, you'll be able to tell right off the bat, I can tell immediately and your customers, most importantly, your customers, your intended audience, the people walking down the halls in your school tell print quality almost before they can tell anything else. So one of my number one pieces of advice is go expensive on the print, right? Uh, high gloss, you should not be printing less than 300 DPI, right? Um, now I can't see your, your printed materials in person, so I'm seeing it on a screen. Um, but in some cases, I can tell that it's uh, just because I, I, can't, I can't even zoom in enough uh, on the way that I get them. Uh, so I'm just receiving them in basically a website. So I can't zoom in like at all. Uh, so I, I can't tell very well. But if I was in person and this is the intention is like we're getting we're trying to be as close as we can to reality what the people in your school or whoever is looking at this poster, what do they see? Number one, they're gonna see print quality. So no kind of qualities that they offer, how high of a quality can they print? Can they print full color, high gloss? That's what you want, a glossy finish where the paper is shiny on cardstock. If you're printing your poster on standard eight and a half by standard weight eight and a half by eleven, um, off of a color copier that's in the school office, it, I, I would say that's not good enough for the amount of creativity you're putting in, right? Uh, because this is your creative, this is your baby, right? This is your little play. You're directing a little play on a page. Like make it look good, right? Glossy print, 300, 300 DPI quality. That's what you want to shoot for. Uh, and and there are even higher quality of print qualities of print than that, but I would say 300 DPI should do it. Glossy print on cardstock. That that would be one of my first recommendations. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that right now? Print quality. Just this is something that that I feel like kids, uh, students, teachers might need to know, because um, sometimes people are afraid to talk or certain things like, um, what if I ask this question and maybe somebody he hasn't already decided yet, and if I ask a wrong question, maybe it's going to change my score or things like that. What everybody needs to oh. know is that yeah, scores have already yeah. been submitted and those things. This is for your learning. This is all about you know questions and things that you have about your growth, and it's without having to worry about the ramifications of how things turned out judging wise. So please feel free to ask whatever questions come in mind, and um, and that's what we're here for is like a platform for that learning. So don't Definitely. be afraid to ask questions. Definitely. Uh, I guess one question I have, how many of you, I guess, just sound off or put it in the comment, how many of you actually physically printed your poster? I don't even know if we know how to raise hands or anything with these. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Okay, Wendy. Yes. Oh, we did. Yeah. Jarrett. Okay. So a couple, a couple. Um, I would say print it. Uh, even when it's online, uh, go ahead and print it. You'll never know if you get somebody picky like me that it's like the printing aspect is such an important part of it because the image that you see on screen is presented to you. And anybody who has lighting design knows what I'm talking about. The image that you're seeing on the screen is RGB. When it comes printed out, it's CMYK. <laughs> it's it's, it's not RGB, it, it's going to fundamentally look different because it's a different media from the screen to the print. And so you need to, you need to know how colors translate. You need to know uh, just how the look translates from the screen to the page. Uh, it's one of those like fundamental graphic design issues that I feel like doesn't get covered very much um, is that If you've experienced that, you know what I'm talking about. There's a, the computer has to translate the RGB language of the screen, colors of light, into colors of pigments. And that translation is, some, is not sometimes, it's always imperfect. And that's, so it just takes practice and getting to know that that can be an issue. So high quality print, working with your printer, knowing who your printer is, um, and having a good relationship with them, always treat people with respect. I mean, 
when you when you go into a printer, um, trust that they know more than you do, right? <laughs> even if you even if you if you even if you know everything, uh, I always trust the printer. You tell me, hey, what can I do? What if, what can I do to improve the quality here? This color looks bad. I'm gonna assume it's my fault. What can I do to fix that? Uh, that kind of thing. Um, Second thing, this is very practical. Uh, this is like um, when I when I have taught design uh, fundamentals of layout and design principles of layout and design uh, fonts. As I said already, yes, I'm missing everything in print too, <laughs> Mindy. It needs to be printed. Uh, uh, is font choice uh, on your poster? You shouldn't have more than three fonts. Three fonts. Uh, if you have more than three fonts, uh, you've broken a rule, and breaking rules is okay in this. Okay, your teachers are like, no, break, don't tell them to break rule. Uh, <laughs> you got to know what the rule is right before you can break it. Uh, but a title font, a uh, script font, and a text font, an information font. So, whatever the font is for your title. Sometimes that's a novelty font. Sometimes it's all capitals. Sometimes it's big, bold. Sometimes it's you know modern and minimalist or whatever. Your title font, your uh, script font, any form of script font for things that need to be highlighted, things that need to be accented. And then a text font for just giving the information. Your title font should be the eye-catching one. It it's the thing, right? The title is the thing you're trying to sell. Um, it should be the most noticeable thing on your poster. If when you look at your poster, the title is not the most noticeable thing, then it's not right. It's not there yet. The title should be the most noticeable thing. After that is the information, right? And also all together with that, the information, everything is the image of it. But uh, I know that sounds, well, that's no fun. The title's <laughs> the most important. The title's the first thing and the last thing that they should see is true. Um, at least that's, that's my work experience is that if the title is not bold enough, it's not central enough, if it's not the main thing, uh, if the there yet. Um, I don't know if that helps, but three fonts, title, script, and text. If there's more than three, you've broken a rule. I'm fine with breaking the, that rule, but you got to know that that it's out there. Does anybody have any questions on that? Or any other questions, guys? Yeah, you can open yeah. it up to other things if you have other questions as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Any questions at all? While we're waiting for them to formulate some, one of the things that we, we like to, to do is know what's the newest kinds of things that are going on in theater marketing nowadays and like making sure that we're keeping up with best practices in the industry within what we're offering in our contests. I mean, that's one of the things like some years we've had them to try to create maybe like a specialty event around the play. Um, we've had them do things like specialty items like for promotional stuff. Uh, we've right. got the study guides. We've done that as a, as a different kind of a thing um, as part of marketing strategies. Um, and I think of that tend to be part of what's currently being used for marketing that we haven't thought of yet at UIL. Yeah, um, absolutely. I would say, and this isn't even that new, uh, but having... Um, getting proficient with using a digital screen because so many schools now uh, and theaters, their poster is actually put up as a digital image on what is a, tele a large television screen. Uh, in some cases, even billboard screens, right? There are television billboard screen screens, mm -hmm. not in my hometown, but <laughs> they're out there. Um, and so getting to work with that kind of thing uh, even even projected images as your as your poster. Uh, working with um, working with uh, making a preview or a video blurb. You know the, the microfilm uh, generation is here. <laughs> you can mm -hmm. you can make microfilms that will capture attention. Uh, and and a, and I would say it'd be a fun thing to to jump into is just just like 
three seconds of kaboom, this is it, title, and it's gone. Uh, just those really quick types of information fields. I got a question here. I, I that so the question, Carl, uh, do I think there'll be a trend in making playbills online and having to use a QR code to access it on your phone? I think that is a trend already. Uh, theaters are wanting to save money on printing. <laughs> uh, like I just said, if you're going to print it, make sure it's quality and printing costs are only going up because as printing gets more rare and everything goes online, uh, that's, you know, the supply and demand. I do think I do think that almost every still do at least some printed programs. So they're still going to have some because there's there's right now there are still people who come to the theater who they they want the printed program. And also a lot of times just the department, the people, the production company, they want a physical record that goes in their storage. You know, it's a tradition thing. Uh, but I, I could see it happening at certain places for certain productions. Um, but yeah, uh, the QR code, I haven't done it, uh, but I really am so impressed with your students. So, mm -hmm. uh -oh. is Nick frozen on everybody's screen? Nick, are you frozen? He's frozen. Okay. I don't He's know frozen. To, I know. I don't know how to fix anything like that. So uh, it's on. It's on his end. Oh, okay. So he's got to do that. Does he know though? Uh, I well, I put it on the question thing. I told him he froze up. So oh, okay. Am I here? Now you are. There you <laughs> are. I'm back. Now you're back. Nobody else. I can see myself. I can't tell if anybody can see me. Well, uh, I can see you now, but you're not moving. You're frozen, but now I can hear you at least. Okay, am I back? Now you are. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, my it, a, a note just came up that says my internet connection is unstable. I like I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. That's okay. This off. is that's part of that's part of the Zoom world. Um, we get that a lot on Zoom. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. Maybe that was the the uh, internet telling me uh, that I was talking about that for too long. But possibly, I don't know. <laughs> I don't uh, think so. The, the QR code thing. Yeah. Uh, if, if it is going to be more more frequently used, but I see it more and more. Uh, and kudos to you who used a QR code uh, for that. That those were those are just an added kind of bonus. Uh, yeah. Okay. Other questions? I don't even remember what I was talking about before the freeze. That, well, so, yeah, we were. That's what we were talking about. On something yeah, else. So. Well, the other thing was like doing the microfilms or like different kinds of, you know, video kinds of productions and other means of, of uh, types of promotion, uh, different kinds of things was what was before that. And then we had our question on whether QR codes were going to be a kind of a, a the big trend or something that we're moving towards. Um, okay. Sorry, Mindy, I got this question. What do you think good and could be improved on, would and could be improved on programs? Calendars and study guides. Um, okay, I'll start with calendars. The calendars, I don't even know that there's anything that I feel like would or could be improved on. I think that uh, all of the calendars that I looked at really took into account um, a good amount of leeway time on a lot of things that seemed very thoughtful to me and, and uh, made sense to me. Uh, with marketing, you can't go too early uh, because they'll forget about it. You got to mm -hmm. keep reminding people. If you start too early, you got to keep reminding people. You also can't come in too late. Uh, so that that Same medium time. ground, I feel like everybody did pretty well on calendars. Programs, I would say make sure uh, the design choices agree from the poster to the program and, uh, and then throughout the program. In the program, I, I can say this, and I thought I might mention this. I know it's not the main, the main thought when designing a program for your students, uh, for you guys that are students. Your main thought is not the ads. 
Um, but the ads are the reason like why there is a program <laughs> in, in a lot of cases. So the ads, I would say, don't, uh, don't bring your uh, like B game to making ads, bring your A game to making the ads. Uh, because that is, that is what marketing is, right? Those people who have, and I know it was like a fantasy, like, oh, this, uh, this uh, I don't know, car wash company bought an ad for our program. And so there's mm -hmm. an ad space in the program. Um, and then it's, it's like, I don't know, like a minimal amount of thought went into making that ad look good. I would say as a, at, you know, at high tier level of graphic design, greatness, the ad will look as good as the rest of the program. And I mean, mm -hmm. that's something that if any of you are interested in, in uh, marketing and graphic design, it's a great career field to go into. In fact, when I'm stressed out in the middle of a performance, I think to myself, I could just be a graphic designer right yeah. now and not have to deal with all this. Uh, but uh, it means being creative with someone else's baby, right? So taking that that car wash and making it look as good as the rest of your program, that's a really good graphic designer. Um, that's really good marketing. Um, and then with the study guides also, like putting as much thought into how it looks, the font choices, is it readable? Um, is it actually fun? Try out your study guides on some kids, you know? Find some, I don't know, find some, find some kids. They're out there. <laughs> Give them a study guide. Hey, kid, you want a study guide? I don't know how you do this, but you could probably in this or is this lame? Uh, and they'll tell you, kids are brutally honest. Uh, if if kids is your target audience or students or peers, right? You can try it out on your peers with the study guides. Um, something I, I would say there, like something else I would throw out uh, when we're talking about that. Um, like when I think about the ads and the things that you're mentioning in the programs, all we require the students to have in their program for the competition is four pages, which could essentially be a cover page, which is your main design, and the inside pages that list all of your cast and crew, mm -hmm. and maybe something on the back for inviting future, you know, whatever it might be, or some kind of a closing page, thank yous or whatever. Right. So when you're encouraging students as far as like what they submit, because some of these, they're, when they're going above and beyond and adding some of that stuff into their programs, yeah. Um, yeah, I just like because kids start kids start figuring out pretty quick. It's like going, okay, what do I have to do to win this contest? It's not just like what do I have to do to meet the requirements. It's like what do I have to do to win this contest? To win it, so I right? guess that's those are the layers so, of things. Say this is that everything that I've been saying, I've been talking about as if I'm expecting these people to be interested in a future career, possibly in marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, I know may, that might not be the case, but that is the direction that I'm giving these critiques. I'm not necessarily giving you this information from a standpoint of here's how you win theater marketing. And you, <laughs> I, I feel like that would be useful, but only for winning UIL theater marketing. Uh, but hopefully this applies to both. Hopefully when you do great design work, not That's only the goal. helping you prepare that, for a That theater. is the goal, is the that idea is the that goal. what's best That's for true. industry, what's best for everybody else, is what wins is what's consistently is out there but it's just like you know so I, I think that's a really good point it's like if you're going to add something in there bring your a game you know make it your best thing don't don't let the quality of that i added something in but it actually took away from the stuff i had already done that was really good um yeah. it, it's like yeah so don't particular business or something might seem boring to you and it could totally be boring right mm -hmm. uh your one of your sponsors might be, you know, uh, Mark Hall Life Insurance, you know, and it's like, <laughs> what, do, what do I do with this? But again, a good storyteller, a good artist, a good graphic designer, a good marketing will make that look as good as everything else to the best of your ability. Again, it's Mr. Hall's prerogative on if he wants that ad to look that way. And I've, and I've dealt with that before where I made a beautiful ad. It was beautiful. And then the customer says, Oh, I don't like that. Can you put some like flames at the bottom and a little like <laughs> flip art of a pizza up in the corner? It's like, yes, I can do that. And can and should. Thank you. Can Ouch. and should, two different things. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Let me jump on Jarrett Stewart's question here. It says, um, I was discussing the first glance impact. How do I think color choices affect that impact? 
and what do you like to see when it comes to color choices? Uh, um, obviously, there's a lot to color theory, uh, and uh, you know what what does red communicate? My stage lighting book is so funny. I love going over this chapter on color theory and stage lighting. Um, okay, green indicates life, new growth, also sickness, death, rot, decay. <laughs> Red uh, says passion, uh, vibrancy, life. It also says rage, anger, hatred. Uh, so it, it's very, it can be very subjective. But um, I would say just if it, if it captures your attention, um, try to stick with, I don't know, almost like the three font rule. Try to stick with three main colors, right? If, if you've got every color of the rainbow on there, that's a choice but it can be a little bit too much. I don't know. I would say try not to do too much with color. Like use color. Uh, like you got to afford it, right? <laughs> like, that's true. I mean, that was, that's how we were brought up. It's like the more colors you add to your screen print there, the more expensive it's going to be. So just, you know, like uh, getting yeah. one extra one costs a lot too. Ooh. Yeah. It's like, okay, how rich do I, how rich do I want to go? with my color usage. Uh, and does it help tell the story I'm trying to tell? Um, monochrome is not always a bad choice. I've done plenty of monochrome and I've seen a lot of monochrome. Also look out there at what you see. And I'll say this, and I usually do say this earlier. When it comes to color choices, even black and white is a color choice. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and we had some black and white, uh, but uh, when you think of some of the most memorable theater marketing like can you right now think of the hamilton logo mm -hmm. it's textual with a tiny bit of an image right the a iconic right it's so simple too it's so simple and it doesn't matter what color it's printed it in it's printed it it doesn't matter that textual logo is good wicked right um mm -hmm. All, all, all of them. I, I mean, those are the two that come to my head right off the bat. The Lion King. Uh, so many amazing Broadway shows or big shows that you can think of come to your head and you can think of almost right off the bat of the textual logo. Same thing with uh, marketing, not even in theater. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, right? Uh, the iPod, Apple, right? Apple, okay, not necessarily textual, but a simple image. And jumping back into what we we're saying about trends, not just in theater, but marketing trends in the last two years or so, you may have noticed this. Uh, corporations, there's a new aesthetic, which is actually an old aesthetic for marketing, and they're going back to simpler logo designs, right? Oh, got simplified. Burger King, logo got simplified. Doritos, they're all going back to a much more simple, so they're getting rid of gradients, they're getting rid of drop shadows, they're getting rid of bevel and emboss, <laughs> they're getting rid of texture, uh, just flat color shapes and text. And that is that is a current trend in logo design and marketing, not just in theater, but across the board, uh, simpler textual designs with just very simple, uh, almost vector graphic shapes. Um, Okay, uh, Mindy. Oh yeah, uh, so Mindy's saying that good marketing skills um, apply to so many careers, and it's so mm -hmm. true. Uh, and I mean, here I am in theater. I paid for all of my graduate school uh, in marketing uh, with marketing skills, and now I can do that in theater. So as I'm the head of the program here at here at Howard Payne University. I love designing our posters. I it's almost like directing a play, right? Designing a poster. In fact, I already have the text logo for all of our shows for next year. You know, Cinderella, <laughs> and Don Quixote, and The Wind in the Willows. It's like they're all, all the logos are done and I can almost see the play just based on the title, on the text, on the font and how it looks. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, marketing, and, and a good idea of design what looks good and then not just what looks good, but how to make it happen in a way that looks quality. Uh, 
you know, a lot of people can design a really good looking poster on the computer, but then you try to print it, you got to know what looks good in print. Uh, and that, that comes from working with the printer and, and practicing, getting going for high quality print and high quality material. Uh, that kind of that kind of thing is important. Absolutely. Good stuff. Um, I, I hate, I don't know, I, we're scheduled till seven. I hate that we're kind of closing in on that. Anybody got some more questions that I can talk way too Burning long questions about? that must be answered immediately or you won't rest. If you think of them later, you can always email them to me and I know where, I know where to find this guy. Yeah, please email me. Uh, my email address. You, can, you could probably it. type it in the chat. Oh, hey. I was gonna. I was I've heard of such a thing. A I've heard of, of such nonsense, but I don't really always know how to do it myself. Um, one thing I would like to say is that we're really so appreciative, uh, Nick, for your time uh, coming and talking to the students about this. You're, you're so knowledgeable in this particular field, and I feel like that's such an asset for us to be able to understand everything that goes into it. Because I think truly brilliant, beautiful advertising looks effortless <laughs> you know yeah. i feel like that that's something that you're showing you, you you every little choice that they make has an impact and really yeah. really is a part of the show and telling yeah. the story for sure and i think that that's that's of such value to us um and i, I just really appreciate you sharing all of that with them yeah and absolutely. look forward to hearing um, more of your feedback as we close in you know that's kind of one of my things is make the make two or three big choices. So you narrow down your little choices, mm -hmm. right? Two or three big choices on color, on fonts, and on, uh, I, and I forgot to say this, this is something I always try to say, when I'm designing anything from a logo to a poster to a t-shirt design, if somebody comes to me and says, I want you to design a logo, I will ask them, give me three adjectives. So what are adjectives? They're descriptive words. Give me three adjectives for your business. Like, uh, I don't know. I'm like, until you know how to describe your business, I can't design a logo for you. They'll say, all right, we're modern. Hip. I don't know. Is that a word? <laughs> modern, technolo technological, technological, I don't know. Yeah. and um, I don't know, whatever the third one is. Uh, or they'll come and be like, well, we're... Uh, classy we're classy. classic we're classy we <laughs> are refined uh we are calm we're peaceful um uh, we're helpful we're bold right um what is what are the adjectives you want from this play um you want to say about this play it's mysterious it's dark it's hilarious it's you know whatever it is you want to say about that your font choice your color choice will all reflect that okay i'm i'm done talking ask me questions anything there's no there's no stupid question you have you have about two minutes of questions left guys so if you have anything or if you want to make any comments if there's any things that yeah. you guys are making comments in general um about things you enjoyed about the contest this year or there were challenges for you you wish i would quit doing and not do again I, you know you can always you can always say something i do love to make this contest something that we all love and want to be a part of so i, I really am all about your feedback too so I, I mean, crickets. I don't know. Yeah. Crickets. Well, congratulations to everybody. I mean, uh, outstanding absolutely. Work. Um, absolutely. Everybody should be proud of the work that they submitted. It was. It is. Uh, I don't know. It's. It's really difficult to go through and try to find. Okay, these are the top ones. But everybody did such a great job. And thank you. Thank from you. me for submitting your and work. if you want to know what the like, results of the contest are you're going to be tuning in on mon uh monday at six o'clock the the link will be posted on the uil website for you to um, access and view um get together a viewing party if you'd like um for the couple of minutes or whatever that it lasts <laughs> but i mean by all means celebrate it i think one of my favorite videos i've seen was the reaction like somebody had shown like a one act play company's watch party when they were watching to see the results and stuff like that and seeing that 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 excitement or whatever treasure I want you to treasure this time and know how special it is to be at this level um if some people weren't able to see this like i said we are recording so we'll be able to you know hopefully have that for them for later but this was for you and this was to celebrate you and your work and i hope that you leave here feeling like you have really really accomplished something amazing and for those of you who are not seniors i can't wait for you to hear what next year's play is on yeah Monday. hopefully in person maybe 
maybe we'll actually get to see those physical prints. Oh, I would love it. Yeah, we're, you know, we're always looking for opportunities to where we could actually display the work at some point if it's possible. But, you know, we're just honestly just grateful to be able to have the contest at all in whatever form that we can get it. We were ready to do it. So um, thank you guys all for participating and giving us your hearts and souls work. And um, congratulations again. And I get to run and go do a session on set. So I will see you guys again soon, I hope, uh, Monday night. All right. Thank you all so much. Love you guys.